Okay, the second video in this series of the principles of programming, the mind store way of achieving our goals. One of the things to realise is that the left brain as it developed, you know, through our education system, that's become, if you like, the most important part of our brain for thinking, the way that it shapes our thinking and limits us in so many ways. A wonderful part of our brain, of course, that we need. However, not very good when it comes to thinking about goal setting. And so, one of the things I'd like you to understand is this notion of not knowing how, but knowing why you want to achieve something that seems impossible is actually natural to us and one of the first things that kind of emerged in our consciousness uh, through our lives. The first example for me would be surely a baby, um, the two, two for the baby for me. Uh, we'll, we'll start with the obvious one, um, the baby beginning to be aware the baby that was you began to aware of sound, hearing sound, processing sound, and then more importantly, seeing the different kind of sounds coming from what seems to be the mouth, that doesn't know it's the mouth yet, little baby, but coming from the mouth of parents, of loved ones around, and the encouragement. And sometimes, of course, some of those sounds seemed, well, one would assume threatening, kind of alarming. On the other hand, some were soothing and soft and wonderful. And and laughter and smiling and a sense of, I don't know, maybe just knowing that you were loved. And, and of course, the child wanting, inevitably wanting to return and to speak to. And so it would have a go occasionally and just mumbles would come out. But eventually, of course, through the constant desire to want to speak, what that which seemed totally and utterly impossible to that little baby, somehow the breakthrough comes and it utters those first words. And of course, when it utters usually mummy or daddy, whatever it was, <laughs> the world just went into, the world just changed for the parents or the parent. It just became an awesome moment. It fulfilled someone else's dreams. And that's a natural state. And then that same baby learned to walk. And that, of course, observing people around, walking, that movement, that process, that freedom. The baby couldn't do it, maybe initially learning to crawl and maybe reaching up you know, at the side of a table or a chair, maybe falling down, skinning its knees, smashing its head in the floor, all those horrible, painful things that would have happened to the child. But did it give up? No, it didn't. Did it seem impossible? It must have done. But through the constant repetition, the desire to walk, that little baby never gave up. You didn't give up. You achieved that which you wanted to. And of course, when you achieved that, the consequences for those around you who loved you was just extraordinary. To see you walk was one of the great moments in their lives. And you fulfilled that dream for them. <clears throat> this is a natural state. And then, of course, you'd have gone to, for example, learn to ride a bicycle. And when you first got on a bicycle, maybe maybe a bicycle was put down. <coughs> maybe a, a, a sibling's bicycle or some friend or whatever, and you got on it and had a go and you fell off and skinned your knees and smashed your elbow or whatever it was, and the pain was unbelievable, and it really just seemed that it was impossible. Of course, your desire to ride that bike, to cycle the bike and have that freedom was so compelling, you constantly backed it in your mind and you constantly had a go. Of course, maybe with help from someone behind you running alongside, holding the saddle, but eventually, of course, you did one day... You did cycle and you were doing it and when you did it, you were so inspired by what you achieved. That which was impossible now became the norm. Like speaking, like walking, now riding a bike. That which was impossible became manifest through the constant repetition. And by the way, when you did finally get the bicycle going, the parent who had sort of lovingly supported you, always holding the back of the saddle, you just sent them in to another wonderful place. You fulfilled the dream for them. You made life really special. The consequences, if you like, screen four, ship four, just were there for you to see. This is natural. And then if you had a go at learning to swim, first time you got in a swimming pool or a river or a or, or the seaside or whatever it was, in a lake or a loch or whatever it was, and you go in there and of course others, maybe a summer's day and lots of other children playing and splashing and the, the noise and the excitement, but it was so threatening, so threatening, a fundamental fear deep inside you. But did you give up? No. That which seemed impossible, you overcame that thing that was processing in your mind that's saying you can't do this because of the power in the programming and through your mind of the constant repetition of whatever it meant to you, the why, in other words, of you being you learning to swim was so compelling. You kept having a go, you would go again, you would go again, and eventually your feet came off the bottom and you took those few strokes and you were swimming and my goodness, you just felt amazing and again, you fulfilled someone else's 
friends if they had been helping each other to swim. This is absolutely a natural state. Then later, even as an adult, even as an adult, when already the left brain has been so powerfully programming away in its own way, limiting us because of the importance we give it, you possibly for the first time got yourself behind the wheel of a car. A car with a gear stick and a clutch and a handbrake and all that mirror signal manoeuvre stuff. And you had a go at driving a car for the first time. And I tell you what, I'm absolutely certain of this, that for a moment or two you thought, this is totally and utterly impossible. But did you give up? No. Did the desire, did the dream, did the programme in your mind of you driving that car, whatever it meant for you, the freedom it gave you, the excitement, the way you were going, travelling and so on, whatever the why was, was so compelling. You constantly, almost sometimes humiliated yourself as you were learning broke out and maybe had terrible arguments with loved ones who maybe had to do all they could to help you. You didn't give up. And one magical day, you were learning to drive and you knew you could do it. And of course, when you passed your test, it was just fantastic. And for those who were encouraging you to learn, you fulfilled the dream for them too. Even as an adult, that which seemed impossible through constant repetition, through the power of the programming, became manifest. Because this is our natural state. It's only your left brain that gets in the way that limits the goal setting that say you can't have. And then because you don't set the goal that really inspires you, you're not constantly going back to the future. Onto screen three, onto screen, uh, onto ship three, and of course ultimately to ship four and screen four where you manifest the consequences for others when you succeed. This is the way we are as natural human beings. Programming works. It always has. It always will. And you know what? The Mindstore way of doing it is absolutely perfect. On you go. Get back in and start programming again. Another video to follow. Cheers now. Bye-bye.